So Gabe Davis. So we've got him saying that he felt like he lost a step when he suffered a high ankle sprain early in the 2022 mm -hmm. season, and he felt like that impacted his whole year. And he said it was messing with his head, but he added he feels back to normal and he's all healthy now. And that's uh, a Bill's beat reporter said that. For LaVisca Chenault, he says that he worked out harder than ever this offseason because, quote, I knew what was coming. Yep. And that was David Newton of uh, ESPN covering the Panthers there. So thoughts on these two guys. I think they're, you know, I think generally speaking, Gabe Davis certainly has had much, much more NFL success and fantasy success too. But LaVisca Chenault, I think, has burnt a number of people over the years and thinking it's going to be the year, it's going to be the year. Uh, so what are your thoughts on these two? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there with LaVisca. I think, you know, this is, he was on that KJ Hamler class. Uh, Denzel Mims also in that class. And these were some, um, uh, I think it was it Terrace Marshall, maybe not Terrace Marshall. There was another second round wide receiver. It wasn't, it wasn't Andy Isabella, but there was another second round round wide receiver in there that didn't pan out. Mm -hmm. Um, that I think we had high hopes for, um, but LaVisca coming out of Colorado was sort of like that, that, that like Jack of all trades player, a gadget player. I think you'd want to get your hands on, um, and as you pointed out, he just hasn't panned out. And this is year four of his contract. Obviously, the Jaguars were happy to part with him, and, and the Panthers took him on. And he had one uh, – I think he had one or two, you know, big play breaks last year with the Panthers once he was traded. But, you know, I mean, you talk about boom or bust potential. I mean, it's it's 95% bust. Um, and I wouldn't say that he's a bust. I mean, he certainly found himself a, a, a place to play in the league. Um, but at the same time – he is not Debo Samuel light. And when he makes it, when he says that quote about, he knew it was coming with Frank Reich. I think there's the thought there that he's able to be Debo Samuel light. And that's, that's just not happening. And I under, I understand that you, you've got Hubbard and uh, they paid Miles Sanders handsomely to come into, into town to play running back. Um, I just don't foresee him being very successful in, in that Debo role. He doesn't have the speed. Uh, and I don't think he has the elusiveness that, that Debo does. I think he's a little bit flat footed in that regard. Easy for me to say. Um, as much as I hate to, to, to you know, I, I, I guess put a damper on, on his, on his uh, opportunity there in Carolina, because I think that wide receiver one slash two role is, is up for grabs with Mingo and Thielen and Chark. I'd take your pick. Um for uh, for Br the Bryce is right and Bryce Young, but uh, for Gabe Davis, I'll, I'll make this succinct and, and quick. I, I think that you know he's also got to battle uh, guys like Khalil Shakir, um, Dalton Kincaid, um, uh, Dawson Knox, and um, I'm thinking there's another wide receiver I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on. Obviously, the Stephon Diggs is the clear cut number one. So I mean, mm -hmm. any any given week Gabe Davis could be the wide receiver two there, or he could be the wide receiver five. Um, and you have James cook. Who's also, you know, like a really strong receiving receiving back in year three out of Georgia. So I think I, I lean Gabe Davis pretty significantly, but I, I think that, uh, you know, he's just going to be, you know, every third to fourth week in fantasy. So is, is going to hit. So are you really going to trust that if he's back to back weeks and then it's three weeks of sub, 10 points in, in fantasy it's it's three for 46 you know oof. i don't know you know that, that's just my taste yeah i think uh gabe davis you know for the last couple of years he's shown us who he is and i think people yeah. kind of saw him early and they were like all right it's about to be that breakout he had his what i now like to call his gabe davis playoff game where he had 50 yeah. plus fantasy points it's like no but that's what he is like if you look at the totality of his season you know including playoffs and what have you that is the NFL player that he is. Fantasy-wise, he's likely infuriating unless you get him understanding what he is. He's that flex play when you need him. So when you plug him in, you're hoping he gets one to two deep tutties yep. and you're good to go. If he doesn't, he doesn't maybe scorch you and, and have you lose a week. And with LaVisca, you know, when, when the talk is of Debo, I think it's more likely he's – it's interesting to see a guy that's that size that is the gadget guy. And I know there's only so many people you can really point to that can do those things. I think his best case scenario is he is he's more of a Cordero Patterson. And yep. that is more certainly within reach than a Debo Samuel, but even Cordero Patterson, he had a very interesting career that seemed to have flamed out. And then once he became a yep. running back for a number of different teams, mm -hmm. it really, really sparked his uh, kind of a resurgence for his career. So um, so hopefully the Visca is useful for the Panthers. Um, and love that you said the Bryce is right, by the way, really appreciate that. That was fantastic. 
Um, and yeah, Gabe Davis, you know, could be a changing of the guard with how they have their formations there with, you know, Knox and Kincaid interested to see what that looks like. And, you know, you got James Cook back there. Do they bring in Dalvin also? I don't think they would, but we'll see. (laughs) 